Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. We are in Jeremiah chapter 32, and again, uh, the context, the surroundings here is Jerusalem is fast being destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar has surrounded the city. So this is the, this is the circumstances. This is the, you know, uh, what, what is going on as Jeremiah now is giving the prophecy. Um, and it's a bad time for Israel. And kind of was interesting too. You know, sometimes no matter how deservantly a person may deserve, okay, uh, what's get, coming to them. It's, it, it, it is sometimes bad to see, you know, um, it, it, it's bad to see. And, uh, and, and we're seeing this here. And, and what's, I said this before, and this is again, just kind of a, a thought, a reminder that we, we're seeing sin, okay, the, the, the nature of sin, <coughs> excuse me. And so, uh, how bad sin can get. And this is something that I think we should be very cognitive of, that this is one of the threads that's in the Bible. This is how sinful man is. This is how bad it can get. And we're going to see this, that um, despite what's happening around them, you see how this they're just going to still rebel against God. And this is something, and, and I'll say that for, and I'll get into it, but I don't want to get too far off on that, but we sometimes the way people present kind of the gospel, the gospel narrative, is God is kind of like way off someplace, and then people are kind of like just good people, especially, I, I, especially Christian you know, whether it's novels, whether it's, um, you know, films, um, they kind of present the sinner as the good person who's kind of like, hey, I'm just, you know, God, why is this happening to me? And they don't, you know, what, what God is showing us here is just how bad sin could be. And it's, so we're going to see this. Let's, let's go to it. But Jeremiah chapter 32. Uh, oh, here we go. All right, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. In the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which is the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. At the time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was in prison in the guard's courtyard in the palace of the king of Judah. So why was Jeremiah uh, <laughs> uh, in prison? We'll get to that. But again, <clears throat> now keep this in mind, Jerusalem was being besieged. Now, one of the things that um, Nebuchadnezzar would do is he would surround the city and just sit. Sometimes for a year, two years, he'd just sit. And, and what that would do, it would weaken the city. They would, it would starve them off, they, you know. So, um, verse 3, Zedekiah, the king of Judah. Now, in all of this, you have his enemies that, that, that has jailed Jeremiah. Again, just amazing this in nature here. All right, look at this. Zedekiah the king of Judah had imprisoned him, saying, Why are you prophesying? This is what the Lord says. Look, I'm about to hand the city over to Babylon king, and he will capture it. Again, right? Remember, his very words were coming to pass. That is what's amazing about this. 
So Zedekiah had him jailed. He's in jail. And guess what? The armies of Babylon are besieging Jerusalem. He says, Zedekiah, the king of Judah, will not escape from the Chaldeans. Indeed, he will certainly be handed over to the king of Babylon. They would speak face to face and meet eye to eye. He would take Zedekiah to Babylon, where he will stay until I attend to him. This is the Lord's declaration. You will fight the uh, Chaldeans, but <coughs> you will not succeed. Now, he's repeating the prophecy, right? So he says, Jeremiah replied, the word of the Lord came to me. Watch, uh, Hanamel, uh, the son of your uncle Shalom, is coming uh, to you to say, buy my field in Enoch for yourself. Uh, for, you, for you own the rights of redemption to buy it. Then my cousin Hamel came to the guard's courtyard as the Lord had said and urged him, please buy my field in Anoth. Anna, Anna not. Anna thought, okay, in the land of Benjamin, for you own the right of inheritance and redemption. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. So I bought the field in Anna for my cousin Hananiah, and I waited out to him the money. She goes of silver. I recorded it on the scroll, sealed it, and called the witness and weighed out the silver and the scales. I took the purchase agreement and sealed a copy with his terms and conditions and uh, and opened the copy and gave the purchase agreement to Baraj, the son of Neri, son of uh, Maheshina. Okay, I know I'm butchering these names, but I did this in the sight of my cousin, Hanamel. Uh, the witnesses who were signing the purchase agreement and all the Jude Judeans sitting in the guard's courtyard. I instructed a Barak, um in their sight. This is what this is what the Lord of hosts. This is okay, this is what the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says. Take these scrolls, this purchase agreement with the sealed copy, uh, and open the copy and put them in an earthen storage jar so that they will last a long time. But this is what the Lord for this is what the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says. Houses, fields, vineyards will again be bought in this land. Now, kind of interesting because Jeremiah probably would not be alive by the time Israel returns back some 70 years from this point. Verse 16, after I've given the purchase agreement to Merod, the son of Nariot, I pray to the Lord, O Lord God, you have made yourself, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. And with your outstretched arm, nothing is too difficult for you. You should show faith. You show faithful love to a thousand uh, by lay the fathers. But uh, you show faithful love to a thousand, but lay the father's sins upon the son's lap after them. Great and mighty God, <coughs> me, whose name is Yahweh of hosts. The one great in counsel and mighty indeed whose eyes are on all the ways of the sons of men in order to give them each in order to give each person according to his way and the result of his deeds you perform signs and wonders in the land of Egypt and do so to this very day both in Israel and among mankind you made a name for yourself as it is to this as is the case today you brought your people Israel out of Egypt with signs and wonders, with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terror. You gave them this land you swore to give to their ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. They entered and possessed it, but they did not obey your voice or live according to your instruction. They failed to perform all you commanded them to do. And so you brought all the disaster upon them. Look. Siege ramps have come against the city to capture it, and the city, as a result of the sword, famine, and plague, has been handed over to the Chaldeans, who are fighting against it. What you have spoken has happened. Look, you can see it. Yet you, Lord God, have said to me, buy a field with silver, and call in the witnesses 
even though the city had been handed over to the Chaldeans. Now, it is kind of amazing that with all that was going on, they're conducting business. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Look, I am Yahweh, the God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult to me? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I'm about to hand this city over to the Chaldeans, to Babylon, king of Nebuchadnezzar, and he will capture it. The Chaldeans who are going to fight against this city will come, set this city on fire, and burn it along with the houses where it instance has been burned to bail on their rooftops and where drink offerings have been poured out to other gods to provoke me to anger. Now, one of the things is that people always forget these little details about when God judges. And as I said, the the idea is that people think that, you know, that people are so innocent. God just don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to, you know, work hard. No, the incredible sin nature of man, the evil of man's heart. Verse 30, from their youth, the Israelites and the Judeans, Judeans have done nothing but what is evil in my sight. They have done nothing but provoke me to anger by the work of their hands. This is the Lord's declaration. So again, this is what they've done. And again, you know, people always talk about the Old Testament, the God of the Old Testament, the wrath and all that. But they forget he's provoked time and time again to wrath. For this city has caused my wrath and fury to come from the day it was built unto now. I will therefore remove it from my presence because of all the evil the Israelites the Judeans have done to provoke me to anger. They, their kings, their officials, their priests, and their prophets, the men of Judea and the residents of Judea. Now, I want you to kind of note that because, again, when you read the Bible sometimes and you see when the wrath is poured out, it, it may focus on, let's say, the, the the sin that a king does but not but oh but understand all of jerusalem was bound up in sin all the entire city they were doing these detestable things before in the presence of god verse 33 they have turned their backs to me and not their faces though i taught them time and time again they do not listen and receive discipline they have placed their detestable things in the house that's called by my name and have defiled it. They have built the high places of Baal in the valley of Hinnon to make their sons and daughters pass through the fire to Molech, something I had commanded them. I, I had not commanded them. I have never entertained a thought that they do this detestable act causing Judah to sin. Now, the, this, this, this act right here that he's talking about, and always remember that sin is something that you can start off, God hates sin, period. And keep this in mind that Adam, that all Adam did was eat fruit. Think about that. He didn't do any of this stuff right here. Right? He didn't do any of this detestable thing that he's saying. He ate fruit. But that sin caused uh, Adam to be alienated from God. But then sin goes from bad to worse. And so you see these things. The, the, when he says that he make their son and daughter's path through the fire, you would have this statue of Molech. Maybe, I don't know how, you know, some kind of deity looking for him. And then they would have his hands out. And what they would do is they would heat these hands to like really glowing hot. And they would put their living babies on them. And as they burning to death, they was doing this to an offering to, 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 to this deity God. So this again, their acts, besides all of the immorality and just the detestable acts, Verse 36, now therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said to this city about which you have said, it has been handed over to Babylon, king, to Babylon's king through sword, famine, 
and plague. I'm about to gather them. I'm about to gather them from all the lands where I have banished them in my anger, rage, and great wrath. And I will return them to this place and make them live in safety. They will be my people and I will be their God. I will give them one heart in one way so that for their good and for the good of their descendants after them, they will fear me all ways. So again, speaking this prophecy in the midst of the city being besieged, the promise that they will be restored. Now, how many times have you read this? That's why I want you to understand, we've read this over and over again, that they will um, be restored to the land, but after great heartache. You know, after great heartache. Um, notice he said, I will give them one heart in, in one way so that, uh, so that for their good and for the good of their descendants after them, they will fear me always. Verse 40, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never turn away from doing good to them. And I will put fear of me in their hearts so they will never again turn away from me. So the promise of God, again, changed the heart. This is fulfilled in the uh, Jesus dying on the cross as well as the world. But right now he's specifically talking about Israel. And in some respect, Israel's sins is greater than all of the rest of the pagans because they know God. Verse 41, I will take delight in them to do what is good for them. And with all my heart and mind, I will faithfully plant them in this land. So again, when people say, when people say that uh, the church replaced Israel, false. And some people think that God is through Israel, false. Again, the promise is, even though he's judging them now, he is going to bring them back in the land. He is going to bless them. He's going to prosper. Them. Verse 42. This is what the Lord says. Just as I have brought all this great disaster on these people, so I'm about to bring on them uh, all the good I'm promising them. So again, the promise. Now he's speaking this again as the city is being destroyed. So I'm about to bring on them all the good that I'm promising them. Fields which be bought in this land, about which you are saying, it's a desolation without man or beast. It has been handed over to the Chaldeans. By the way, the northern kingdoms of Israel, they already see that. The, the northern kingdom of Israel has already been laying waste for many, many decades. Verse 44, fields will be purchased with silver, the transaction written on the scroll and seal. Witnesses will be called in the land of Benjamin in the surrounding, in the area surrounding Jerusalem. <coughs> and, excuse me, and in Judah's cities, the cities on the hill country, the cities of Judah, foot, uh, the, the cities of the, the Judean foothills, and the cities of the uh, Negev, because I will restore their fortunes. This is the Lord's declarations. So this is the, the image, and as you can see through prophecy, God is always giving uh, imagery, right? Always. And so the image of um, that one day what's going to be restored is commerce. It's going to be restored to Israel. All right, guys. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. I will see you in the next study.